Oh, yes, sir, absolutely. But uh, you remember I'm an airplane driver. Did y'all? Did I tell y'all that? Okay, I've been a pilot, airplane pilot for seventy years. Oh boy, there's not too many of us around. Uh, you Canadians, y'all got y'all know about the Haviland Aviation? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I got over. Our plane beside the Vikings. Yes, sir. I've got over a thousand hours in a beam. Oh, nice. Yes, sir. That thing got a built-in headwind. 10 miles an hour headwind slows it down 20 miles an hour. <laughs> it's a wonderful airplane. I really enjoy it. Uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, us pilots say don't, regardless of how many hours you have of flying, uh, and don't have care how old you are, <clears throat> always read the checklist. So that last one, rethink your thinking, uh, I'd say another version of that is always read the checklist. The interest proportion of every dollar spent is perpetual, it doesn't change. Now the volume of interest is the issue, not the APR. But everywhere you agents go out there, uh, people uh, talk in terms of interest rates, right? Well, you see, that's Wall Street thinking like that. Uh, it's not in, uh, rates, it's volume. Now, uh, I was talking to y'all about the grocery business there a while ago. Uh, another question, a test question. Do y'all know who the richest uh, man in uh, USA is today? Okay. Warren Buffett? Well, probably Bill Gates, but we're, we're going to go with Bill Gates here just by example, all right? Do you know what one man made him the richest man in America? One person made Bill Gates the richest person in the USA. Sir, so, uh, CEO of IBM? No. Sam Walton. Really? How'd he do it? He died. <laughs> he got that. Okay. He died. They, uh, Sam had the cancer, multiple myeloma. Now we had a friend in church that had, was diagnosed with multiple myeloma. From the day of diagnosis, the time he died, it was probably four or five years. Apparently, something comes on over a period of time. So when Sam was diagnosed with multiple myeloma, they divided his estate up into five parts, one for mama, one for the four kids, and them all up will twice the size of Bill Gates. Uh, I saw a uh, report the other day of the 25 richest families in the USA. Uh, the Walton family far and away uh, richer than the Coke family. Really? Rock Rockefellers was number twenty three out of twenty five. Yeah. All Not right. bad for Bettenville, Arkansas. Yeah. So how did he get all this wealth? What up? Grocery business. No, don't y'all turn up the nose at get grocery business. They're not making big profits per item. It's lots of them. Yeah, for instance, actually, do you know how many Walmart stores there are in the world? Don't ask the president of the company, he doesn't know. Uh, you gotta ask the accountant. <laughs> and they did it by the grocery business essentially. So, right, retail. But what does Wall Street talk about? They don't talk about that sort of stuff at all, do they? It's amazing what people listen to in Wall Street. That's why it's so important to read Big J.O. Rooks, Eat the Rich, and anything else that he uh, uh, writes is fun and accurate. Now, uh, anybody familiar with the Elliott Wave Theory? Elliott said uh, that human beings behave in totally irrational patterns. Mm -hmm. And uh, the current uh, guru of the Elliott Wave Theory is Bob Breckler over in uh, Gainesville, Georgia. Uh, I talked to him, I haven't met him, but uh, he sent me all four of his books. Uh, this is from his book, Conquer the Crash. 
how to survive and prosper in a deflationary depression. Now, all my Austrian friends are uh, talking about uh, hyperinflation a la uh, Germany, 1923. <clears throat> uh, if I were a betting man, uh, <coughs> I would put my money with Bob Frechter. It's going to go the other way. Not hyperinflation, it's going to go the other way. Anyway, these are some uh, uh, graphs that he had in this particular book. Here's the story of the Duke of Tulip Bulbs in Holland back there in uh, 1634, uh, December 1, 1634 through uh, 16, February 1637. That's a very short time frame. And you notice how tulips got more valuable than anything and then went to nothing. And exactly uh, this next item here, South Sea Bubble in uh, England, 1722. Uh, I guess that's 1718 or something like that, 1722. You notice how it went up here and crashed and such? And exactly at that same time, John Law took France under with the Mississippi scheme. Uh, what he was doing is the same thing as our Federal Reserve, or what's your central bank in Canada, or Bank of Japan, or anything else. Uh, it's exactly what he was, they were doing, except that he was selling stock in the idea and using uh, lands west of the Mississippi in the New World back in those days. Which was all a figment of their imagination. People were so enamored as to what he was doing, Mark, he couldn't leave his home in Paris without people accosting him on the street and said, uh, we've got to get in on the deal. Four years' time, he took the whole country on him. Unbelievable what people will do. All right, here's the Dow Jones averages. Now, here's where you truly appeared, 1931. And you notice how it uh, dropped like so, then bounced and bounced and bounced and bounced. The dead cat theory, uh, Richard. The Wall Street folks say, you can throw a dead cat off of a skyscraper, you're gonna bounce a little bit. All you gotta do is buy low and sell high. Unbelievable what people will do. All right, here's the coin collectors. Uh, have any of y'all read my second book, Building Your Warehouse of Wealth? Yes, yeah. All right, you know, I've got that in here specifically. My experience with uh, silver, silver, that uh, we, uh, two partners and I sold the lease we had on this uh, cell phone tower on property we own. Now, we said, uh, you know, we keep getting these offers uh, instead of just having an income every year, why don't we, as old as we are, why don't we just go ahead and take this, let them buy us out? So it was forty-five thousand dollars, that's fifteen thousand dollars a piece. Lump sum. Well, I knew that the federal government was going to take five thousand of that, so I had ten thousand to do something with. And so I said, well, uh, here's my Austrian friends talking about. Uh, Precious metals like gold. So I said, Shall I buy gold? Uh, gold stocks? Oh, no. You need to buy bullion. Well, I said, Well, let's see. If I'm going to buy gold bullion and the hyperinflation that you guys fear comes along and uh, my car needs uh, oil change and tires rotated, am I going to take one of them gold bars down there and scrape off the metal and. and uh, I don't think so. I said, silver makes much more sense. I could buy silver coins. And then now when my car needs uh, service, and I go down there and give him one of those coins, and he changes my oil, changes the tire, or rotates the tires. Uh, so I took uh, uh, $10,000 and I put in uh, uh, gold, uh, silver coins, uh, double eagles, or something like that. I'm wrong. Now, uh, $44 a piece I paid for them. Now, I'm not going to tell you where I've got them hid. So don't y'all come, come looking. Okay. All right. Now, I office at home, and so here a few years ago, uh, Mary came into the office, and she'd been listening to Rush Limbaugh, and uh, he was a commercial about how wonderful it is to have silver coins. That silver's going to go higher than anything. Uh, and uh, that's the place to put money. 
And so I uh, went to the website where I bought the silver coins, and if I sold them back to them, uh, they'd give me $22 each, provided I paid the freight. <laughs> <laughs> That's good math. Not. And Mary said, why'd you do that? Yes. <laughs> Baby, I've been living with you all these years, and you don't know what business I'm in. I'm in the education business. I meet more financial geniuses out there than you can stick at. Now when they come up with all this stuff about the, how wonderful precious metals is, I know, and I can review their message. <laughs> That's worth more than the fact that the price of the silver is going down. Now, uh, so... Uh, April 1 every year is when we get, you can get the check from the leasing company, uh, uh, from the tower leasing. And so that first year, I went back to where I got the stuff hid, uh, and I didn't find a check in there for $2,000 like I usually get. So the next year, I went back and looked at there was no check in there either. Now, if I still had the lease, uh, the check would have gone up 20% uh, for the next five years. There was no check there. Y'all get the message? Yeah. But silver is the way to go. They said so. Now, also, I never have been able to get this answer about these guys. If silver is going to do what you talk about, why is it you want to get rid of it? Why is it you want to sell it? Why don't you just keep it? <laughs> that makes a whole lot more sense if what you said is going to be true. Logic tells you that, doesn't it, Curtis? You got a weed eater? Three of what's that mean? <laughs> All right, so here's the DK there that went up to almost 40,000. There is no hope of, quote, recovery, end quote. That's impossible. But yet, that's what the kind of conversation is that's bantering around out there in the financial community. It's absurd. Bank of Japan calls that. Just like all the other uh, booms that have been out there, the central bank is the one that caused it. So how do you rectify all this, folks? Wait. You get the banking function out of their hands. You get a lot of folks doing what we're talking about here. Get their medium of exchange stored in uh, life insurance with mutual dividend paying companies. And you have no idea how excited I am uh, to uh, have a Monica, is it Monica? Mom, do y'all know Monica here? <laughs> we sure well. Did y'all hear, hear tell where she's from? Monica, can you tell them very quickly what you told me at a break while ago? Yeah. She lives in Vancouver. Now you know about real estate in Vancouver. Right? Oh my God. Do you know about Chinese in, ba in Vancouver? Tell them, love. Yeah, so uh, uh, we have lots of, uh, uh, I heard from lots of uh, Chinese advisors told me that uh, Chinese clients, they are kind of crazy in uh, buying houses. So yeah. five, five million property, they buy, they own two or three. Yeah, if that's within one year. And then the those uh, is uh, is actually no good to local market, so uh, uh, local uh, people they can't afford to own their own uh, home, mm. yeah, especially for young for young people. No matter how much they save every month, every year, so the savings cannot catch the the, the pricing house pricing uh, going up. So I'm thinking of maybe we can uh, work with uh, uh, Chinese advisors to switch those uh, uh, wealthy uh, class mindset, switch from buying properties to buy insurance using uh, this uh, uh, be your banker concept. There's a there was some news out just the other day yeah. in Vancouver. Ninety percent of the homes, the freestanding homes, single family homes, are over a million dollars now. Yes, and yeah. there's in the rental market. There's zero vacancy yeah and there are what they say 11,000 homes in the greater Vancouver area that are vacant not it's counting because, the condominiums right not counting just the freestanding right. homes so now they're the city of Vancouver is looking at having a vacant vacancy tax if you have a vacant home that you're not willing to rent they're going to tax you 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a motivating factor for another yeah. pot of mm -hmm. money to accept this. Mm -hmm. So do you all see what this lady sees? Yeah. How big this vision is? Get the banking fucking now to your new level through the means of dividend paying old life insurance does the world all kinds of good. It does away with that distortion that, that is so prevalent there uh, in such a beautiful place. So uh, this is not about self life insurance. This is about understanding who's the banker in the world. And it should be you and me totally. And it's capable of doing so. That's the concept. So uh, it's just that life insurance is the only thing that meets these qualifications. 